All right, so welcome back to another video. So today what I wanna do is provide you with a little color grading tutorial, basically just to achieve this look that I got here for this clip. So I put this together last week and I should preface that I am not a professional colorist. So what I do might not be entirely correct. It's just my process that I use to achieve a look that I wanna achieve. And so I should mention for this clip, it was shot with the intention of it initially looking much cooler as if it were nighttime. But for this instance, I wanted to warm it up and make it seem almost like sunrise. And so just be mindful of that when you go to try to apply this grade to your clips. But yeah, so let's hop on into DaVinci Resolve into our color page here. And first things first, what I want to do is just go into our project settings here and just show you the color management tab. So I just use the color science of DaVinci YRGB and timeline color space rec 709 and output color space was the same as timeline. So now that we've got that done, let's go into our color page here and let's create our node structure. So this node structure is pretty basic. So what I wanna do is first just create two serial nodes and then after I'm just gonna create two parallel nodes as so, just press option P and then we'll do and then we'll do six additional serial nodes. So I'm going to start in this serial node here and I'm going to label this as my color space transform. So as you guessed it, we're going to drag and drop our color space transform effect into this node here. And then for the input color space, I'm going to select Sony S gamut three Cine and then input gamma is S log three because that's what I was shooting with. So then for my output color space, what I'm going to do is I'm going to just select rec 709. And then for my output gamma, we're gonna select Cineon Film Log. So after that, what we wanna do is we wanna label this adjacent node as our film look. So with this node, we're gonna just use the DaVinci Resolve Film LUTs here. And, and we're gonna select the Kodak 2383 D55 LUT, but I don't want it as intense as it, as it is here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to the keyer tab here and I'm gonna bring the key output gain down to I think about 0 0.77. Yeah, approximately there, approximately 0 0.77, just so it's not as contrasty as when you first apply it. I find they can be a little bit overpowering and we don't want that, do we? Next, what we're gonna do is we're gonna hop on back to our second node in our node tree. And let's label this as our primaries. Perfect. Okay, so getting into our primaries node, we're gonna be working with our color wheels mainly. So what I wanna first do is I wanna bring the gain down for all values to about 0 0.9. And then I'm gonna introduce more red into our image. It's not gonna look pretty right off the get-go, but I'm gonna bring the red value up to 1.14 here. So like I said, looks pretty trashy at the moment. And we're gonna also introduce a little bit more green. So I'm gonna bring that up to 0 0.98. So that kinda warms our image up a little bit and makes it less on the cool cooler side of things and more into the warmer tones. Then what I wanna do is I wanna go over to my gamma and I'm just gonna bring it down slightly to negative 0.01. And then with my lift, what I wanna do is I wanna also bring the red value down to about negative 0.01. So as you can see, that's significantly warmed up our image and it no longer looks like it could be like a nighttime shot. Now more looks like it could be a morning shot, but we're not done there. We're not gonna stop it with that. <laughs> All right, so next what I wanna do is I wanna go to my first node here and we're gonna label this one as our exposure node. So with this one, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna be working in our HDR wheels. So what I wanna do with these HDR wheels is first map them to our color space and our gamma. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna select these three dots here and we're gonna select color space and we're gonna select Sony S Gamut 3 Cine. And then for our gamma, we're gonna select S Log 3. That way it kind of replicates what it would be like to adjust these in camera. So for instance, we're gonna be adjusting our global exposure and we're gonna be bringing that down to negative 1.38. This would be more similar to what it would be like to adjust the exposure in camera now. And so yeah, we're gonna leave it at that for now. We'll come back to this later just to make some fine tune adjustments. But for now, let's move on to this parallel node here. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna label this as our split tone. And so let's go on into our curves tab and our custom curves. Let's unlink all these curves 
just want to make this bigger so we can see. And then let's first start with our blue curve. And what we want to do is we want to introduce a little bit more cyan into the shadows and then a little bit more warmth into the midtones and highlights just to create some dimensionality to our image. So to do that, what we're going to do is we're going to put a control point on the blue curve here in the shadows and just bring it up slightly. And then let's put another control point just a little bit further up and just hold option as you press this control point and that way it'll just attach it to the line here. So then you can slide it up or or down as you see fit. And then I'm also gonna then go to the green curve and do the same thing, except do it slightly less than the blue. Perfect, and then add a control point and put it same spot as where the blue control point is on the line. So yeah, it's very, it's very subtle so far with the shadows. But then what I wanna do is go to our red curve and we'll introduce some red to the highlights and midtones. So let's put that control point right there and then we'll put another one on the line and bring it down to where the green and blue ones are approximately. But as you can see, it's very overpowering with the red. So we wanna dial that down. And what we're gonna do is we're just gonna decrease the red value over here in the sliders till we find something that looks more along the lines of what we're wanting to achieve. Again, it's very subtle. It's not meant to be in your face over the top. It just adds a slight amount of dimensionality to our image. What I also wanna do is I want to subtly bring the saturation down just ever so slightly. So with this node, we're just gonna label this as our saturation node. And to do that, what we're gonna do is we're just gonna stay in our curves panel here. We're just gonna go to the saturation versus saturation curve. And we'll put a control point up here on the top left hand quadrant. And then we'll drag this control point on the right hand side all the way down and then put a control point on the right hand side and just slide it over. This will just decrease the saturation of our skin tones, as you can see, just ever so slightly. And you can just play around with it to see what works best for you and what you prefer as far as a stylistic look. We'll go with that for now. All right, so then what I also want to do is I want to go back to my other parallel node here and I'm going to label this as our skin. So we'll use the qualifier tool and we're going to select our skin tones. And we just need to refine our selection here just because it's selecting a little too much of our image. Perfect. And then we'll also just increase the blur radius to about 32 here and then our post filter to about 13. That way it just kind of smooths out our selection a little bit more, it doesn't make it as harsh. And then what we can do is we can go over to our vector scope and just see where on our skin tone line that our skin tones are falling. And actually right now it's looking pretty spot on. So I'm actually, I'm actually pretty happy with that. So we'll just leave it as is for now. We might have to make some adjustments later on and depending on what your clip's looking like, you might have to make some adjustments to the skin tones. So to do that, what I would do is just go over to our curves, just play around with the hue versus hue slider. And you can also play around with the hue versus saturation depending on what your image is looking like. But for now, I'm just gonna leave it as is. Next, what I wanna do is I wanna hop on over to our second last node. With this one, what I wanna do is just introduce a little bit of grain to our image. So we'll just use the film grain effect in DaVinci Resolve, drag and drop that there. And then let's label our node as grain. And for this, I wanna make it subtle, but still slightly noticeable. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna do a 35 millimeter grain overlay, but then I'm gonna actually make some adjustments. So I'm gonna bring the texture down to 0.22 and we're gonna bring the grain size up to 0.386. I wanna bring the grain strength up to 0.386 as well. And then we'll leave the offset as is and the symmetry and then I want to and then I also want to increase the saturation to 0.059 and so if we zoom in here you can see before after just adds a little bit more texture to our image all right so next I want to just hop into our final node in our node tree here and with this one what I want to do is I want to add a halation effect so we'll just go in our effects panel and just type in halation and then drag and drop that into that node so then so what I want to do with the halation effect is first I want to decrease the threshold to about 0.138 there and then we're going to leave the normalization at one we're going to increase the 
film saturation to about 4.39 there. And then let's bring down the strength to about 0.321. And then we'll bring the gamma down ever so slightly to about yeah, 1.253. And then let's bring the saturation down quite a bit here. So we'll bring that down to about 0.7. And then I want to bring the spread up to about 0.6, just to make it look a little creamier, a little softer, more dreamlike almost. Sweet. Yeah, that's fun. That's cool. So that's awesome, but it's made our highlights look a little too bright for my liking. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to our exposure node and then I'm going to go to our light value here. And then with that, I want to decrease that by quite a bit. We want to make it pretty darn subtle. I'm going to bring that down to about negative 0.53. And so as you can see now, it just looks very soft and dreamlike. Whereas before it was just a little too harsh for my liking. See, you can see before after, before, after. I just, yeah, I like that look a lot better. And just play around with what looks good for your image, depending on how hard the light is. And then let's just go and label our halation node here. Perfect. And I also want to add one more node after our halation node. And with this, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to drag and drop our glow effect from our effects panel. We just want to add a little extra element to our image just to make it pop a little and make it look a little bit more professional. So, so what we're going to do in the glow node is decrease the shine threshold all the way down and same with the spread. And then let's scroll on down to the composite type and I want to go select soft light and that's looking pretty harsh at the moment. So we'll go down to the global blend and we're going to decrease that by quite a bit, almost all of it. I want to, yeah, just leave it at about 0.1, very subtle, but I think it just adds another element to our image. That's just a nice little touch. Okay. So then and final node is this one right here. And what we're going to do with this is we're going to create a power window in this node. So let's label this first as our windows. And then I'm going to go and select our circle power window. And we're just going to elongate it to make it more of an oval. I also want to just increase the size pretty significantly and then also just make it very soft around the edges. And so we want to use our power windows to shape the light and basically act as a source of negative fill in post. So that being said, I want to invert it so it's only focusing on the outside portions of our power window. And then let's go on into our color wheels. And I want to just decrease the gamma down here. We'll decrease it down to about negative 0.06. Just kind of provides a little bit of negative fill in the corners and puts a little bit more emphasis on our subject's face, which in this case is me. Oh yeah, don't forget to label your node. So let's label this as glow. And yeah, that's about that. We can go back into our skin tones and go into our, our vector scope. Let's just see what our skin tones are looking like at the moment. Nice. So as you can see, they're falling nicely on our skin tone value line. So the skin tones are on point and juicy. But yeah, that's all for this grade. It was relatively quick and easy. Hopefully you enjoyed it. Anyways, just yeah, let me know in the comments what you thought of the video and if you have any suggestions for future videos. But yeah, I appreciate you guys' support and let's just yeah, keep creating this community where we can share our ideas and grow together. All right, see you guys.